love it when you're rummaging through cupboards and you find old Christmas presents. Stop the clock! And as if by magic, Lego Han Solo finally has the tools to see what's going on on top of the Lego Millennium Falcon. Right, that's enough messing with the Lego. Let's go and check out my helmet, shall we? Well, hello there, ladies and gents. How the very devil are you? Andy here off of Andy Man Cam, and of course, this is the helmet I was talking about. Get your minds out of the gutter. So impressed was I with the HJC Alpha 90S that I recently tested. If you haven't seen the review of that helmet, check the links in the top right. Uh, but yeah, so impressed was I that I decided to trade that in and buy myself an HJC R470. And I opted for this very tasteful, very classy matte grey titanium finish to go with my very classy Honda CB1000R. No more yellow for me, thanks very much. But of course, before I can start using this helmet, I need to get it set up, so just thought I'd take you along with my little journey because I tend to field loads of questions about how I've actually set the helmet up, so this time you can join me from the very beginning. In order to set this helmet up, I have an assortment of goodies here. We've got the GoPro Hero 8 as well as the GoPro microphone adapter. We've got a Cardo PackTalk Slim intercom. For the last year or so, I've been using the Senna 10C Evo, and to be honest, I've been mostly happy with this intercom, but to go with the new sleeker, slightly more subtle look of the new helmet, I thought a sleeker, slightly more subtle look of the intercom would be more fitting. Also, because the people I'm most likely to be able to ride with all use pack talks, so it's gonna be good to be able to join in with the mesh system with those. We've also got a shiny silver mirrored visor, and of course, a pin lock to go with that. And nestling down here at the front, a couple of sachets of my favorite little wonder moldable putty gubbins, which I'm actually gonna be using to fix the GoPro mount onto the front of the helmet. Because the contours and the shapes of this helmet are a little bit too awkward and there's a little bit too much going on to be able to use a flat sticky pad that comes with the GoPros. So we're gonna have to get custom on this. And I'm gonna get started with the PackTalk Slim intercom system, not least because I just wanna get the box out of the way so I've got a bit more space on the table. So, plonk that aside. I'm gonna need to get all of this gubbins out. There's the intercom itself, which in case you didn't know, is a very small, low profile, slim intercom system but with a separate battery pack, which fits around the back of the helmet so that the weight is distributed a bit better. And for me, mostly, I just want this really subtle look and the incredibly aerodynamic finish that I'm gonna get with this slim control unit. And the battery pack at the back just means there's less weight on the side of your head. Hopefully that's gonna be less noticeable with it being on the back. And then in this little box, USB cable, boom mic. Not gonna use that because I want as lightweight and as simple as possible. Velcro jobbies, might need those later. The wired microphone, complete with sticky Velcro pad. And then the JBL headphone speakers. Very excited to see how these sound. I've heard some very good things. No pun intended. Alcohol wipes, we'll need them in a minute. And then these clippy things to fix the battery pack bit into the back of the helmet. Right, so get that out of the way. I'll take out my oversized hemorrhoid cushion and we'll start with unpacking the helmet so we can get better access to everything that's in here and a bit better view of what's going on, hopefully. I'm gonna start off just by popping out cheek pads using this emergency release system. That's quite easy, you can just whack those out with one pull on this tab here. Everything just pops out nice and easy, brilliant. Still got the label in it. I haven't even worn this helmet on the bike yet, so this is a bit of a bold step. Feels comfortable enough, so hopefully it'll be a keeper. We've got little covery pieces covering over the little cutouts for the speakers there. I'm also very happy to see that in this helmet, in the R470, they are elongated, so I've got a little bit of adjustment as to where I can put my headphones. Whereas on the R490S, that was just one round thing and it was tough. You had to put it exactly where they wanted you to put it. Poppers at the back, just pulls out of those little tabbies at the front. And just for those who are interested, there's a view inside the R70 with nothing fitted. Just to make things even easier with a view, I'm gonna take out this little chin curtain thing. Okay, for step one, I'm gonna go with attaching the battery pack bit to the back end of the helmet. First part of this, I believe, is to attach this skippy, skirty, clippy, whippy, pingy, wingy thing on the back there. And then literally no idea what this bit's for. 
quick consultation with the destructions. This bit is for the CL17 helmet. I haven't got one of those, so we can ignore that. So then what we do is take these newly attached prongs on the back there and poke them in between the EPS liner of the helmet and the outer shell flat to the rim of the helmet as possible. It's easier than I expected. And then obviously this dangly flappy piece needs to go, same concept, onto the side of the helmet. So the little tabby finger piece goes in between the EPS liner, shell of the helmet, obviously avoiding the mechanism for the sun visor, flat to the rim as possible. And there we go. Jobs are good in there. Coming out of the other end, we have two connections. We've got one which looks dangerously like a headphone socket and one which is a semi-proprietary two-pin socket. This one's for the microphone, this one is for the headphones. I'm gonna start with the headphones. But what is pretty cool with this headset, and I believe this is also a possibility with the Pactop Bold, is that you can plug an ordinary set of headphones with a 3.5 millimeter socket into the unit and then hear everything using your favorite headphones. I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna go with using these to plug that in. Of course, that is one thing I'm a bit worried about. I've got quite a chunky bunch of plastic here that I need to stick away somewhere, but hopefully that won't be too much of a trouble. So then inside the helmet here, using these readily prepared, thank you very much, HJC, cut out scallops with Velcro pads in there. We just put the already prepared with Velcro on the back of them speakers into those little scallops. Bosh. That's it. Around to the other one, exactly the same. Bosh, that's it. Could not be easier. Then we come to the microphone. Once again, already prepared with Velcro on the back of itself. So we just need to find somewhere to stick this pad into the chin piece. Now at this point, it is important to bear in mind where the vents are on your helmet, because on my helmet in particular, there is in fact a vent on the very bottom of the chin here. And that is activated by this little switch lever thingy in here and it opens up two little vents, one either side of itself. And the reason I say you need to bear this in mind is because the last thing you want is to whack your microphone right next to where that vent exhausts air into the helmet and then end up with nothing but wind noise over the intercom system the whole time you've got that vent open. So in my particular case, I could of course smash the microphone in completely centrally and not worry about it because the wind is gonna be going either side of it. But because I'm also gonna be fitting a GoPro camera clip to the front of the helmet, that is in fact going to block that vent anyway. So there's not going to be any air getting in there. Problem solved. So at this point, I shall take one of the alcohol wipes. Wow. No expense spared, Cardo. Give this a wipe. And while I'm at it, because waste not whatnot, I'm going to pre-prepare my little GoPro clippy mounty before this alcohol wipe dries up. Put that over here where I won't get any more greasy fingerprints on it. I could also do the front as well, but I'm going to be having my dirty mitts all over it while I'm messing about. So just have to open another wipe for that. So with that all cleaned and dried, I can take my Velcro pad, peel the backing off, stick that into place in the middle of the chin. Firm pressure all over, that is in. So then it's as simple as taking my microphone, plonking that into the middle, and then connecting up those last two remaining connections. Can't get it wrong because connectors are keyed. It's impossible to get it the wrong way around. That is not a challenge. If you break your intercom, it's not my fault. Just lay that roughly where it's gonna end up and we can start putting pads back in. slides and clips very easily back into place. And I'm gonna try and sandwich this connection stuff in the seam between those two foam pads so that the thickness of it is kind of hidden by the thickness of the pads. So it popples back in. And that's the main crown padding back into the helmet. So now the right cheek pad. I'm glad to see that the cheek pads actually open so you don't have to worry about threading the straps through. I've had uh, the last helmet in particular, the Carbon Enduro from Nishwa. This was closed, so you had to always thread the strap through there, which meant it was a bit of a pain in the ass. I mean, not an insurmountable task, but it did make it a bit faffy. I want this cable to sit in the crease of the cheek pad like that, so that when it's folded over, everything's held it in, held it? So with that cable tucked into the groove there, poke this plastic piece in between the styrofoam liner and the outer shell of the helmet. That all slides into place. And at the front there, I'll show you on the other one, there's this little round cutout. And this has a peg that it clips onto, which you can actually feel it clip into place, so you know that it's not gonna rotate. It's not gonna come out again until somebody else, hopefully never, pulls on this emergency release cord. Cable into the crease there, fold that all over. Also again, like I said, putting this headphone connector piece in between those two foam pads so that everything stays in place. And then there's the first popper. There's the second popper. And then last but not least, the one up there by the top of the ear. And as you can see there, microphone in place, 
cable running straight into the cheek pad. And then the other side, considerably easier because there's not really many cables to worry about. Plastic bit between EPS liner, shell of the helmet. There's a little bit more faffy because obviously the intercom is now taking up some of the space that this thing wants. That one tucks in, centralized the battery unit there. And as rear ends go, I would say that's a very tidy back end context, ladies and gents. So then to finish, and that is the Packtalk Slim installed onto the Alpha 70. I think that looks great. That looks awesome. That's really sleek, aerodynamic, low profile, barely stands out on this helmet at all. Obviously I would have preferred the silver bit to be a bit of a darker silver, but so what? You can't have everything. It's going to match with the visor once I've put that on. But we can't assume that everything has worked, so let's give it a quick try. We push the two buttons on the side here. Hello, Packtalk Slim, DMC, Intercom, Moe. And apparently, if I say, hey Cardo, radio on. Radio on, 107.5. Hey Cardo, radio off. Radio off. So yeah, with the intercom finished, we can move on to the next stage of this operation, which is fitting the GoPro onto the front of the helmet. Now, when I was using the HJC Arthur 90 s which is a flip front helmet, I also had the problem of too much going on in the center to fit a camera clip onto there. In fact, the, the main vent on the front of the 90S is pretty much about the size of the one on the top of this helmet. It's just a massive vent that covers the whole of the chin, makes putting a camera onto the center of the chin piece almost impossible. So I had a clip mounted to the side and then a bunch of arms and bits putting the camera central onto the helmet. Now, of course, I could do the same with this. I could even have the camera mounted off to the side of the helmet, but in keeping with this subtlety and aerodynamic idea that I've got going on here, I desperately want it to be in the middle and I want to have as little plastic and scaffolding and nonsense on here as possible. And that's where this stuff comes in. Sugru. This stuff is absolutely brilliant. It's basically coloured moldable silicon which you can mould into any shape you want and then it goes hard, provides you with an incredibly sticky and custom shaped adhesive solution. I actually used Sugru when I mounted the camera onto the initial carbon enduro so I know it's reliable, I know it works. So what I plan to do is to stick a piece across this flat bit here, along the sides of this vent here, a little bit along the edge as well, just to create a surface onto which I can mount my clip. And speaking of which, because of the space that I have available, I've already trimmed off one end of the clip to make it a little bit shorter, just to take away a little bit of real estate problems that I might have. So now the clip will be flush with the bottom edge of the helmet, but not interfere in any way with this vent clip. And just to make sure, test it with the clip actually fitted. Yeah, that doesn't also affect that vent in any way. Very nice. Couldn't do that again if I tried. First of all, I'm going to take the second alcohol wipe, as massive as it is, carefully it doesn't blow in the wind and flap me in the face. Clean off all of this area. So now I can take out my Sugru. Absolutely love this stuff. Had a bit of a scare though, because I've had it for ages. I've bought a pack of it and then obviously you keep it till you have a job worth opening the pack for, because once you've opened the pack, the whole stuff is then no longer any good. Once it goes off, it's off. So I kept it for so long, trying to save it for jobs that were worthwhile, and it was past the use-by date. But luckily, top tip if you've got some Sugru, if you keep it in the fridge, apparently the shelf life has tripled. So despite having gone off last month, apparently the stuff is still good. Okay, so there is the Sugru. Essentially just a chunk of moldable black goo. So I'm gonna make one sausage. Go across the front here. A little thin sausage to go along the front corner. One here down the side. And another one down the other side. But then now, hopefully, when I push my clip onto this, it will squash everything into place, flatly meet the contours of the curve of this, and also flatly meet all of the contours and the curves and the crannies and the nooks of the front of the helmet. Here we go. And then I can obviously push whatever comes out as excess back in to fill the gaps and create a nice, neat, smooth contour between the helmet and the camera clip. And there we go, a beautifully flat, centrally mounted GoPro clip on my R470 without any need for extra sticky pads or scaffolding and things to bring it round to the front. I won't put the camera on it to test it just yet because obviously this stuff is still soft. It takes about 12 to 24 hours to go off, I think. So I'm gonna have to leave that without touching it 
for the meantime, but it does mean we can carry on with the next job. Yeah, so with the GoPro clip now mounted on, we need to worry about fitting the microphone adapter. Not overly keen on sticking the camera on there just yet because all of this Sugro stuff is still soft, so it will be susceptible to move a little bit, but I think I can probably guesstimate roughly where it needs to be, so if I stick the microphone adapter into the GoPro Hero 8, put that in roughly the position it's gonna be in. I'm gonna end up with the microphone adapter being about there, just above the sun visor thingy. So I'm actually gonna cheat and use this Velcro pad from the Cardo Pack Talk set because surplus to requirement. Plonk that onto the back of the mic adapter. Peel back the sticky paddiness. Hold the camera in place once again and then stick that down. Give that a good solid press. Quite nice actually, it's like a low profile Velcro, if there even is such a thing, but it's not super sticky and super fluffy, which means it doesn't look utterly ridiculous on the front of the helmet when I haven't got the camera attached. So then we come to the final section of the camera setup, which is putting in the microphone. Got a massive dead cat on this, but it is actually just a tiny little lapel mic. This microphone was actually impossibly cheap. It cost me, I think, about six, seven quid on Amazon, made by a company called Speedlink. I'll put a link in the description so you can find it, but I found it to be the best microphone I've had so far. So good, in fact, that I've got two of them. Although this one actually is way shorter. When I bought it, the cable was about a meter and a half long, I think, but I've shortened it myself just to save on weight and extra cable more than anything. So anyway, pretending that the camera is fitted, just gonna plonk the microphone adapter onto the side of the helmet, plug the mic cable into that, poke that inside the edge the cheek pad liner area bit there. Chase it into the helmet here. Oh, I've just figured out actually, jumping ahead of myself a bit, but in the pin lock pack, there's these little red cliffy thingies. And I wondered what on earth they had to do with installing the pin lock. Turns out the spares for these little red poppers. Oh, there you go. Poke the mic back into his big fat dead cat. It's a good band name, isn't it? Big fat dead cat. Chase this cable up into the crease of the cheek pad there and leave the microphone poking out the front end off to the side of where my mouth will be. I'm not going to be too particular or faffy with this to be honest because it's a new helmet. It's going to take a few tries and attempts I imagine to get the perfect mic position so this is just a work in progress. Try it where it is, see how it sounds. But the main idea is just to have the microphone off to the side of the face pointing up a bit towards the mouth, away from the wind on the bottom, and uh, yeah, fine tuning will come later. So then with that out of the way, we come to the final job, well, final two jobs, which is the fitting of the silver tinted visor, onto which we first need to apply the pin lock. So first of all, making sure that the visor is nice and clean on the inside, because any fluff or dirt that's on the inside of this is gonna end up trapped inside the pin lock once we've applied it. All right, so that's about as clean and dust free as I'm gonna get it. Pin lock out of its packet. Don't panic, it's not tinted, it's just a protective film. And it has a shiny hard side and then another side that has this silicon edging on it. That's the piece that needs to go down onto the visor. So flex the visor like this and then snag these notches underneath the pins. See what they did there? Pin lock. Unbelievable. And then the whole thing flicks down and hopefully we've got a good seal around the entire of this silicon bead. That is a great fit actually. That is great work from Pinlock and HJC. But if for whatever reason the Pinlock doesn't fit when you do it, you can actually twiddle the pins themselves and they are an eccentric mounted pin so that when you spin this, it actually tightens or loosens the tension on the pin lock, which allows you to get the curve to fit, fit better. So obviously if this curve is tighter than the curve of the visor, you can twiddle your knobs to your heart's content and change the curve of the pin lock so it better fits the curve of the visor. Because if you don't get a good seal around this whole thing, the main principle of them working, which is basically like double glazing, doesn't work because there's air getting into the gap. So yeah, once that's in, pins are located into the notches. Looks like we've got a good seal all the way around. You can pull off this protective backing. And the visor is now pinlock equipped, steam proof and weather ready. So coming back to the helmet again and the visor removal systems on the HJC helmets are really impressive. It's impossibly fast to replace these visors. What you need to do is flip the visor up as high as it will go. There's a little clip down the side here. Push that, that side pops off. Same on this side, pull the little tab down. The visor pops off and there we go, the visor is off. 
How fast was that? So then putting on the new Pinlock equipped mirrored visor, complete reverse of the removal, line up the little clippy tabby jobs, push it in, bosh, fixed. Same again on the other side, line it up, push it in, the visor's now fitted, and there we go, that is that. My HJC R470 helmet is now fully set up with the Cardo Packtalk Slim Intercom, Pinlock equipped, silver mirrored visor, and the ability to now fit my GoPro Hero 8 and the mic adapter so I'm ready to get out in the world and start recording some videos with this beastie. And that is that. We are done. Thank you so very much for coming along with me on this incredibly exciting lounge-based journey. Very, very much looking forward to getting out, getting some videos recorded with this new lid on my bonce. I think that looks proper tidy. Really happy with how that intercom looks. Really happy with that shiny silver visor. I've always wanted a silver visor, if I'm completely honest. And I think the little finishes, like the silver badges, instead of being white on the helmet, really set everything off. Looks nice. Can't wait to match it with my nice silver bike. And uh, yeah, with that in mind, thank you so very much for watching. I will see you next time. If you've enjoyed this video, if it's been of any use at all, or even if it's been a little bit entertaining, do give it a like. If it hasn't, give it a dislike either way. Leave me a comment down below in the comments and I will do my very best to get back to you. Otherwise, keep your helmet shiny and I will see you out there. Ta-ra.